Hallo, 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 hallo. Ja. Kann ich die Präsentation noch sehen? Nein, die kriegen Sie gleich drauf. Alexa, ist das mit dem Sound okay? Wenn hallo. Kleiner Test. Test, Test. Wenn das ist, einfach nicht angucken, dann komme ich schnell nach vorne und etwas richtig. Ich will noch kurz einmal Hallo? Noch mal einleiten. Das ist sonst hier auch noch Wasser, falls Sie wollen. Okay, thank you very much. We are now going to the second uh, lecture of today, which is um, an industry perspective from Egger, which is a largely international operating wood industry company. And a warm welcome, please, for Christian Witte, who will now give a presentation about that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here and to present Egger. <clears throat> First of all, I want to thank you, Ole, who supported us here and uh, it's a pleasure for us to support this meeting um, because I think for us as a company it's very important that we talk with forest students because uh, our main business is based on wood and uh, we all need you uh, to understand uh, that we need raw materials, forest management uh, should lead also to forest products, nature conservation is of course very important but also the forest products we need uh, in the future to have sustainable products uh, and don't build everything out of uh, concrete or other materials. So <clears throat> I also would like to um, uh, introduce Bertram Kramer. He's uh, uh, head of wood purchase in the Egger group. Uh, and uh, so we are dealing uh, with, uh, with wood purchase topics in our plant. I started at Egger in 2006. So I'm already 17 years with Egger. And it's a very special experience. Before I studied wood science and technology uh, at the University of Hamburg, but I was always in the wood procurement business and I really enjoy it because it's a really interesting business. So what I would like to present you, <clears throat> give you first of all a general introduction of Egger. I think it's important for you to understand our DNA. Um, and then I will also, also show you what we are doing in, in the wood purchase at Egger. And then, uh, very important, we see the megatrend sustainability, uh, which has very much influence on our daily business. And also then uh, coming more back to the challenges of the supply chain and what we see with forest transformation uh, in the future. <clears throat> so our passion is for a unique resource. Uh, we, almost all our products uh, are out of wood. So uh, this is the most important raw material to us. And therefore, wood purchase uh, is, has also a significant role in the agar group because it's our main resource. Here you see where everything started in 1961 in Tirolia in, in Austria. It's near the famous town of Kitzbühel where you can go for skiing. Um, so on the left side here, you see our first particle board production. I think it was one of the first ones in Europe and even in the world. Uh, and now you see how this developed. You see here our uh, new uh, um, headquarter made out of our products, wood-based products. And you see our, also our production line there today. <clears throat> so Egger, with, uh, with everything started in Tirolia and Austria, uh, we have uh, developed quite significantly in the last years and the last decades. And today we are producing in uh, 21 plants where 17 uh, use wood. You see these red dots. These are our production plants. 
um, where we don't use wood, we are talking about lamination plants or furniture part plants, so they don't buy raw material wood. But in all other red dots, what you see here, we produce MDF, particle board, OSB boards, and also we have one sawmill uh, here in the middle of uh, Germany, in, in the Sauerland area. I think you did, not, uh, you did not go there directly, but it's not far from here, maybe 120 kilometers. And uh, this is affected, of course, also by the beetle calamity. But you see <clears throat> our vision, we are the leading brand for wood-based solutions. So we are also looking for advanced products. We, we develop products uh, and we are very strong in laminating. You will see this later in our products. So we don't only produce raw boards, we also produce uh, laminated boards so that our customers can use it directly for producing kitchens or whatever. Then in the in the gray, you see our sales departments. So we are really worldwide active, not only with our plants, but also with our sales offices. <clears throat> Here you see it more in detail. Um, uh, as I said, mostly MDF, particle board, OSB production, and uh, one plant, you see it here in Brilon, in the Sauerland area, you see here a sawmill. Here on the top, you see the, which is typical for sawmill in German. We first debug and we measure the, the length and we, we, uh, we also source uh, or, or uh, check the diameters and then without bark, all the locks are on, the, on, the, uh, on stocks before it goes to the saw later. But this is not typical for us. This I have to mention. Not typical for Agar is sawmill business. Yeah, we are really a particle board producer. And you will see also later when I talk about forest challenges that that challenges for sawmill are a little bit different than our challenges in wood procurement. What is also interesting, our latest latest investment, uh, we bought a company, a particle board producer in Caorso in Italy, northern Italy. They face for a long time a shortage of wood. Uh, and um, they are the, really the entrepreneurs for using recycling wood. So this particle board production uh, is based on 100% waste wood. So they don't use any wood from the forest anymore. But I will tell also later more about this strategy. <clears throat> Here you see our product areas. So uh, core business, I would say, is furniture, interior design. Uh, especially here in Germany, uh, kitchen industry is very strong. So in our Brilon plant, um, we, we almost uh, sell 100% of our products to the, to the kitchen industry, which is also in this area located, really famous uh, in Germany. Then you see on the right side, flooring, flooring made of, out of HDF, uh, so um, uh, uh, high density fiber boards, uh, and then also uh, building products uh, based on one of these one sawmill what we have, but also um, OSB boards belong to that because these are just construction um, or building uh, purposes. Yeah, here see, you see our uh, product. Uh, we like to sell um, uh, coated products, uh, uh, melamine-faced uh, uh, products. Uh, and unfortunately, I couldn't bring any uh, product today, but what you can see here, that this structure, what you see here, what looks like wood, you can even feel it. So it has it has the structure of a real piece of wood with all the with all the the, the branches in it and everything. So it's really a, a very advanced product, uh, and especially uh, in the hotel in hotel areas when you see new built hotels today, they really like these products. But of course, also kitchen industry. I mean, to mention IKEA, uh, they are one of these big customers for these products. <clears throat> Here you see our ownership. So I think we are very proud that we have still uh, Fritz and Michael Egger in the companies as owner. They are the second generation now in their 70s. They are not in the operational business anymore. But I can say that for me, it's always a big difference working for owners than for to work for shareholders or corporate. Yeah, Because you have really short uh, ways to find decisions, uh, to speak to people. Um, and this is really nice, and this really uh, was always I appreciate always in the company. So they are owners, uh, not in the in the daily business anymore. The daily business is run by four people: Thomas Leising, Hannes Mitter, Weisacher, Frank Bölling, and Michael Egger Jr. And I think this is always very important to us that now the third generation with with uh, Michael Egger 
is in the company, is uh, uh, responsible for the operational business in sales. Uh, and this is also a big benefit for us when they speak to customers. So there's really a face from the customer towards our uh, customers. Yeah, and I think this is really interesting because I asked before how many people or how many nations we, we have here in this audience or in the whole group. I mean, I think this is also shared via internet. Uh, I heard the number 37. So that's really great. We have 88 uh, nations in our company, uh, 11,000 employees, but we feel as as one team. Yeah? And I think this is really important. Uh, of course, uh, I would say that the most of the employees are in Germany, from Germany and Austria. But now we have become over the last decade so international that I think it will not take long time anymore that we switch as official company language maybe to English even. So it's really an international environment, uh, what makes working really, really nice. <clears throat> yeah, here you see the development uh, from 1961 to 2022. Uh, I don't want to show you uh, in detail now what happened, but you can see that, that over the decades, uh, uh, we uh, su uh, sustainably uh, grow with new plans. And I think it's very important what we see today that you are not only in Germany because we have learned what happens in Germany today with forestry, but it's also important that you go to other continents, to other countries, so that you, uh, that you are not dependent on one market also when it comes to raw material. Facts and figures. Today we have a turnover of 4.5 billion euros. Uh, number of employees, 11,000 right now. What is very important, and I always like to mention it, when you look in our investments and acquisitions, you see in, in red the investments. So the investments, we invest really a lot of money into our existing plants. And when you go at Egger into a plant which is 20 years old, you think it's brand new because constantly we are investing money. And I think this is always also different as a family company because uh, production base is our asset and we know that we have to keep it because otherwise uh, it, we have no future. Yeah? So this is very important for us. We invest a lot of money uh, in our existing plants, but of course we're also investing in new plants. Then you see here our production volumes. Uh, altogether we produce uh, 10 million cubic meters. You see that this went a little bit down. The markets are tougher right now. We had a very good market with Corona. People stayed at home, made new kitchen, new houses. Uh, this developed, you can see here, uh, it was really a very, very good business for us. But now we came back to normal, I would say. Yeah. So what are we doing in Egger Wood Purchase? Every plant, what I show you, has an operational wood purchase. So they are doing the contracts with, with uh, suppliers. They are managing all the invoicing. Uh, and I'm in my position, I'm more responsible for all the supply chains, for the processes, for IT topics. Um, but I show you now a little bit more in detail. So what we're doing, we buy uh, altogether 60 million tons of, uh, of wood annually. 60 million tons is 9 million bone dry tons. Uh, so we like to measure everything in bone dry ton because we don't like water. Water, we need energy for it to get it out of the wood. That's why this is really the wood we, what we can use, 9 million bone dry tons. We have in, for the 17 plants, we have 185 employees in wood purchase. We have a lot of people in the field service. So, the, and most of them, I would say 90% are, or 80% are foresters. So they have a forestry background. Um, and uh, we work in 10 different countries on two different continents. Here I have to say that who, who, who checked this, uh, there's a mistake. It's, it's three different continents. It's Europe, North America, and South America. I think America is not only one continent. So that's why three continents. And we work in four different divisions. This is an EGA internal uh, topic, how we manage the different countries. So what we buy for the, for the production is uh, today based on 40% locks. So industrial logs uh, for our board production, but also saw log for this one sawmill what we have is a major part right now. Uh, then we buy 37% sawmill residues. So this is mainly slabs, uh, wood chips and um, dust, sawdust. Uh, and then very important, we also buy today already 23% uh, recycling. This is waste wood, which comes from the waste markets. Uh, and this is also for our particle board uh, production a very important assortment. And it will this this will be 
very important also in the future. What will happen here is, uh, and especially in Germany, that I guess we will see a decrease in, in the sawmill markets. I will show you later. So I guess the future assortment for our business is really recycling. And I guess also industrial locks, especially these uh, soft hardwoods, what we just discussed, gets more and more here in Germany. So um, this will be, uh, this uh, share will increase in the future. So just to give you a short overview, what uh, product types we can use. So in, in the recycling assortment, the waste wood we only use today in particle board. Um, in MDF boards, we only uh, we use industrial locks and sawmill residues. Um, and in uh, OSB boards for the construction, mainly for the building sector, we buy industrial locks, industrial roundwood. And in the, in the sawmill, uh, we buy saw locks. Usually, this is the different products for or the different raw materials for our product. When it comes to logistics, I think it's also worth to mention that uh, in most of our plants we have railway access. So, and we of course transport a lot of water. So it makes sense to go to go for long distance uh, on railways. But the share of long distance transports in our company is not that high. So that's why today we are very dependent on trucks. Um, but what is also important to mention, we have a um, pipeline system. So in, in uh, several plants, we use a pipeline, um, like in Visma and in Brilon. So uh, the conveyor belt from, the, from a sawmill, from a sawmill in the neighborhood, brings sawdust and wood chips directly to our production. And of course, this is the best logistics because you don't need any fossil fuels. And uh, this, is, this is really great. So uh, we have this partnership with one of our own sawmill. But we also have also this uh, partnership with external sawmills or which are owned by uh, third parties. Yeah, then 5% roughly is rail. Probably this will go to increase a little bit in the future. And then also for our Wisma plant, we use vessels, for instance, from Scandinavia or the Baltics. And what we are doing today for the trucks, uh, we, we try to use now or we, we make some projects to use electric trucks. Uh, in the future, which is not easy because of the, the reach of these trucks, uh, but uh, also on this topic, uh, we will work in the future. Yeah, then I mentioned for us, we see a really a mega trend in sustainability. Uh, I think a lot of uh, not only the young generations, but also our customers, uh, they all ask for sustainability. And I mentioned that recycling wood is really important for us. I would say 10 years ago, we didn't even mention that we use recycling wood or waste wood in our boards because no one wanted to buy it. Everyone said that, no, 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 please, no, no waste wood in, in your boards. We don't want to make a kitchen out of waste wood. But today they ask us, please increase the share of recycling in your boards. Yeah? So this is now really a unique selling point. Uh, and there has been over the last 10 years a big change. So we see this trend. Uh, and I think really interesting is that our uh, founder, Fritz Egger Senior, already said, and this statement you can read in our sustainability report, wood is far too valuable to just throw it away. Because what happened in the 60s, he had a little sawmill and he saw that everyone throw away the dust and the chips and the slabs because there was no use for it. So he decided, why should I be uh, running a sawmill when I can take the the waste wood or the sawmill residues from other companies and make a board out of it. So this was the idea. So I would say that from the beginning, Egger was really in sustainability. So what we see, of course, uh, we provide sustainable products. I mean, we our products store a lot of uh, 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 carbon. So uh, every wood product what you sell, I think, is is has a has a good impact on on uh, on environment. Uh, then our production, I said that we always invest in production technology. So when it comes to uh, washing water, uh, about uh, treatment of steam or smoke or whatever. So we always have the latest technology, uh, which is state of the art. So this is, we ensure environmentally friendly production. And of course, for our employees and for our society, we take care social responsibility seriously. So we have... I would say in our company, uh, we have high res responsibility for each other. And you can really feel that, that the employees are not numbers. Uh, every single one is counting and can add a lot of value to the company. So then you see here our environmental circle. 
So what we are what we are doing, I think when we start here with forest, so we we take logs from the forest, we use it in our sawmill, but also we use it in our wood-based panel production, where we also use uh, byproducts from the sawmill. Uh, and then we have uh, the different application, construction, kitchen, whatever. And then it goes to the recycling. And I, from what I understand, uh, a particle board, for instance, you can recycle at least seven times. So a particle board would go directly again in our production process for the, for the wood-based panel production. But after, after seven circles of recycling, uh, this go into our renewable energy plants. So we, and this I will show you also later, uh, we, most of our energy is produced by this renewable energy based on biomass. So even we don't need fossil fuel as energy right now, or not so much. So uh, I think what I would recommend you, if you are interested, you can check our sustainability report. You'll find it on the Agar website um, because it shows you really a lot of internal facts about Agar. Uh, you learn very much about uh, us. We are very transparent there. So uh, it's, I think, 160 pages. And when you have read everything, you know about Agar, yeah, I would say. So we are very open. Uh, and uh, so just one, some parts here um, that our wood-based materials are uh, uh, climate friendly. I mentioned this before. We, we, our products store annually 6.4 million tons of carbon dioxide. Uh, and 88% of all our materials, what we use, are grow back as renewable raw material. So I think. This is very important also when we talk about politics. Uh, we see that our products really have a future, and you see it also in, in a lot of uh, tenders. When you have pu public buildings, they look more for wood. Uh, but, of course, we also have to provide more wood. Yeah? And this is uh, the challenge, what we have, that uh, when it comes to forestry, especially also in Germany, uh, we, see the, we see the limits right now. Yeah, then... Uh, 65% of our wood uses come from byproducts or recycling. So we, our biggest suppliers are the sawmills or the waste, uh, waste wood uh, collectors. Um, and our products are to 71% recyclable. Then also what we are doing now, I mean, net zero, I think, is, is a very big uh, driver for the business right now. So what we also did, we checked uh, our different scopes uh, where we can get or how can we get net zero in the future. Uh, and I think one of our big challenges, what we have is, uh, you see energy production only 10%, 20% uh, yeah, is, is electricity from outside. But really where we have a big challenge is scope three. And here in the 70% is really the, the glue, our biggest impact right now. Because glue, unfortunately, still today is based on uh, mostly on fossil raw materials. And here we have to uh, improve in the future um, uh, because, uh, yeah, this is, has a very big impact on our, on our product. Energy, I mentioned before, our total energy need is 80% heat. We need to dry all the wood, 20% electricity. And today, approximately 70% of our energy demand is produced by renewable uh, biomass in own combined power and heating plants. We are not burning logs and we are not burning wood chips from sawmills uh, because we don't like it, because this is a very important uh, raw material which should be used as furniture or for production for uh, building products. But what we use is uh, waste wood, for instance, or some branches from, from trees. Our goal is one, to get 100% renewable. Uh, or, uh, uh, our future goal is to get 100% independent from fossil fuels. Uh, and therefore, we do major investments in new combined power and heating plants uh, in all our plants right now. But also sustainability impacts our agar wood purchase and our suppliers. So what is our strategy to work with suppliers? First of all, we like to purchase regional, so means we are purchasing in a radius of usually 150 kilometers. Um, and uh, in some parts, in some areas, like in, in Argentina, we have enlarged this goal, so it's 300 kilometers, but it's because of geography. Um, but usually 150 kilometers is our goal to purchase wood very locally. Then we like to make direct business. We don't like traders. Yeah, We want to make direct handshake with 
the forest owner with the sawmill or maybe with the waste service company because then you have transparency in the supply chain uh, and you know what's going on. And also we like to act in partnership. So we see that we produce now since 1960 and we want to produce in the next decades. So for us, a partnership is very important. Uh, once you make a good business, I think the next time the supplier says, uh, no, thank you. I don't want to make business with you anymore. This is not what, how we are dealing. Uh, we think that the partnership is really important. Then also here, you see that we have a supplier code of conduct. We increase recycling content. Um, we, have, we purchase 60% fresh wood from certified sources, uh, here to mention ISO certificate, FSC, PFC. Uh, we have a due diligence system for tracing the origin of wood, as I mentioned before. We have all our field service, which have a direct contact to the suppliers. So they, uh, in most of the cases, they know directly where we buy the wood from, what is the origin of the wood, uh, and also we like the direct supplies. This is very important, and I think this is, this is our DNA in, in, in wood purchase at EGA. So challenges in supply chain wood. Now I come back, I think, to, uh, to, the, uh, to the presentation of Susanna, and I'm happy that the content is not so much different from yours, so <laughs> that's already good. Um, for us, it's a little bit difficult because uh, uh, Germany is a very important market for us. We have uh, uh, three different uh, wood producing plants in Germany, um, but we also have to see the, the big picture. Uh, of course, uh, Germany has a very well developed wood industry, probably the, the best developed in the world. So we come from a very, very high level. This is also to mention because of the spruce, what we had before uh, with big stocks. Um, but uh, our procurement areas are also in North Carolina, in Argentina, uh, and uh, also in UK. Yeah? So this is really important to mention uh, wh what happens there. Yeah? And of course, we all see the pictures in Canada right now, uh, where wildfires uh, and the pine beetle calamity in, Can in, in British Columbia uh, destroys major parts of the wood industry. Yeah? And I think this is not our interest uh, uh, that we get destroyed because of wildfires or there's no wood available anymore. Yeah? But on the other hand, I think what also happens there that there's a lot of bush material in the forest because of uh, maybe forest management is not so done properly anymore. So that's a very good source for all these fires. Yeah? So the less you, the less you manage the forest, uh, the higher the risk for fires also gain. And what we see right now there is that this Canadian sawmill industry moves a lot to the southeast of the US where you have the southern yellow pine um, available uh, in a great amount, very fast growing, 35 years rotation times, big stems. Uh, so uh, a lot of these uh, companies move now to this area. We are happy because we have one of our particle boards uh, in this area in North Carolina uh, since four years. Uh, so we have their very good raw material source right now. But in Canada, totally different. A lot of companies uh, need to shut down right now. When you look to Southern America, uh, South America, there you have major pine and eucalyptus plantations. I talk now about Argentina. There's a really a high growth rate and uh, all plantations, yeah, short rotation. And in Germany, we don't like plantations, but when I travel around the world, I everywhere see plantations, but not in Germany or in Central Europe. Yeah? So I think here maybe we can change also something in the future. Uh, we have to see. Um, but of course, also there we have a risk. We saw last summer very hot temperatures. So there was a pine beetle, there are drafts, uh, the, the trees are just dying in some special areas. But all the pulp and paper industry is going right now to South America because of the fast growing eucalyptus, because of the pine. I think Uruguay uh, uh, attracts a lot of these companies so, uh, and moves from Europe uh, uh, to, to South America right now. Then Russia, yeah, Russia is of course very special. Um, we see some soft hardwoods there, we see coniferous, we see some birch, aspen, spruce. Harvesting uh, conditions are um, very hard because they lose the frost there. So I think they face also challenges because they need the frost to go into the winter time to the forest because otherwise it's muddy. So this is a special challenge there. And when we go to UK, we have two plants in UK, in North England and uh, in Scotland. 
We have a lot of water there, and since a couple of uh, decades, they they grow Sitka spruce there with also short rotation times, uh, I think 60, 70, 80 years, so much shorter than, than, than here in Germany. Uh, and water usually not a limiting factor on the island. Yeah? So there is, I think, they, they would need to plant more trees because they have uh, great areas of uh, unused uh, land right now. So I guess that uh, they will do more plantation there in the next uh, years. Yeah, Poland, we have also a plant in Poland. There's mostly pine. Spruce has not the big, uh, big problems right now because it's there growing on high elevations. So we did, after the Second World War, we, we did the mistake here in central Germany to, to plant spruce everywhere because maybe it was also the only really available tree species after uh, Second World War. Um, but in Poland, uh, they, they use mostly pine and on the high elevations of the Carpath Mountains, um, they, uh, they grow the spruce, so this is rather stable. And also in Romania and Austria, they have also the high elevations, and on these high elevations, the spruce is still rather stable, I would say. Yeah? Of course, there's a lot of calamities like snow, heavy snowfall with wet snow and storms. Uh, I mean, this happens everywhere uh, nowadays, um, but uh, the, the growing trend for, for the spruce is still okay in these two countries. Yeah, and then we see the big, big challenge here in Central Europe. And this is not only Germany, it's also Czech Republic and the eastern part of France. We have there the high forest stocks uh, uh, in general with more than 300 cubic meters a hectare. This is outstanding in the world, this big amount of stocks. Um, but unfortunately, this is mainly spruce. And we see that the spruce has a lot of problems because of its demand for water. The, the roots are not very... Uh, deep in the soil and that's why it is depending on constant water also in summertime and what happened in 2018 we had no rain in this area here from may till september so that was the i would say uh, there was so much stress uh, uh, for the trees and also before we had a, in the january we had a big storm in this area here so all together uh, it was really bad luck i would say but this is climate change. You never know where it occurs, where the impacts occur. And now this area is really hit uh, uh, really badly. Yeah? So still, Germany spruce counts for 33% of the stocks, but stocks decreased over the last 10 years, uh, especially in some areas here like the Harz or the Soling area and also in the Sauerland area where our sawmill is. And of course, this has a direct impact uh, on the wood availability for the sawmills. So general conclusions, in, and this is the view of EGA, what, what we see worldwide. At the moment, in many parts of our purchasing areas, we have seen no direct impact on forestry or forestry transformation yet. We see calamities, we see accidental uh, harvesting of wood by beetle calamity, by, by windstorm, uh, but we have not seen the transformation in forestry. I think this is really important here to mention. Then for the, the coniferous trees, pine, spruce, remain most important material for the timber industry for an indefinite period of time. And I think this is also very important to mention, even in this area, um, and or when you go more to South Germany with Bavaria with high stocks, or Thuringia with high stocks of, of uh, spruce. For the next one to two decades, there will be a lot of, of spruce available, yeah? and they will harvest a lot. And of course, it's not good to have it because our industry would need to be forced to, to advance more products. But when you have this wood still available, you don't do very much to. You need to have it in mind, and it's a, but it's a long process. It's not what you need to have in two, three years in place. It's a process of at least 20 years, I would say. What we are doing, we have no problems with soft hardwoods in our board production, birch, poplar, aspen, elder, willow, everything can be used in our productions. Of course, logistics is more challenging and the harvesting is more challenging, but in our production, it is no problem and we use it to some extent already today and we will use it much more in the future. Beach, here in Germany, uh, we can use for HDF, for our laminating floorings. I showed you before the, the topic, but beach also it's not the easiest uh, 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 species uh, because it has heavy weight. And when you think about sawmills, I mean, I don't know if some of you is a carpenter and he did some construction, some housing. 
uh, softwood is really lightweight, so you make a nice, easy house. But with a beach, it's really heavy and it will change everything in the building sector. Yeah? This you need to have in mind. Other hard hardwood oak is for us, I have to mention here, is a problem because of the tannins. It has an impact on how the glue reacts in the board production. So I know that oak is a very, very important uh, future species because it can, uh, it can uh, very easily uh, cover dry seasons maybe. But there we have really, uh, we struggle a little bit, I would say. We can use it to maybe four, five, six, seven percent. But today I would say not more. And uh, yeah, this is not so easy. But of course, we need to do some research here in the future uh, because I think it will be available. Yeah, and then, which is a very important trend. I mean, I talked about uh, environmental friendly uh, construction. We all like to use wood. We all like to use, uh, I mean, look at these products here. This is every, everything is wood here. So we like to use it. Uh, but therefore, we, use, we need to have the products out of the forest. I think this is very important. And what we see right now here, that the, especially with the, with the crisis in Ukraine, the, the demand for energy uh, has really increased now here in Central Europe. So a lot of, much more wood is going to, uh, to burning now. Um, a lot of private companies from farmer, farmer producers, they like to build now a, um, a burning plant uh, based on raw wood, raw materials, maybe some waste wood or whatever. So this is a trend. I would say that it's not good that we start now to burn uh, wood here to a big extent. Yeah, this cannot be the future. And of course, biocomposites, uh, I think, yeah, to, uh, this is also a future trend uh, to get rid of all the plastics in the future and go back or go to, to materials which are based on maybe agricultural products and maybe on wood products. This we, we will see also as a big trend worldwide. And really the, the competition for the raw material is increasing, is increasing significantly. So this is really a big, big trend. Expectations for Germany due to the high remaining stocks of proofs, we believe we will see for the next 10 to 20 years a big amount of available softwood. But of course, with big regional differences from the Harz mountain area, you don't have to expect too much. Also in the Sauerland area, not too much. But when you go more to south, uh, Black Forest, for instance, uh, they have so much spruce still available there that uh, this, this, this has a major impact still today. We see for the last 30 years, forest transformation in public forest. But uh, we also learned today from Susanne that 50% uh, of the owners are in, in Germany, uh, are private forest owners in Germany. So they have an interest uh, of, of planting trees, which they can also market in the future. Uh, so that's why I think they, they are going to plant softwood trees also now and also in the future, pine, Douglas fir, large spruce, fir, and others. Of course, not as monoculture, not all spruce, yeah, this is clear. But as mixed forest with other uh, hardwood trees, uh, I think uh, we will see also um, softwood still from these private uh, forest owners because they, they have a different mindset uh, and they, they also uh, think about profitability of their forest. Uh, of course, and I think this is also important to mention, your rotation times. I think we talk about rotation times in Germany of maybe spruce 120 years, uh, beach maybe 140 years. I'm not so much in the forest business, but I think these are the numbers right now. But what we will see for the coniferous trees, the rotation times will go down and they will not wait that we have this kind of spruce tree grown. Uh, so they will uh, cut more the short diameters to mitigate risk in the future. And uh, of course, this is clear, coniferous volumes will not that be that high anymore in the future as we see it today. I mean, this is a fact, and I guess uh, it has an impact on the, on the sawmill industry in Germany. So we see no, no investment in any, any new sawmill sites right now. And it's the opposite, uh, the sawmill, uh, I think the sawmill activity will go down in Germany. And that's why this is one of our important part of raw material source. So we need to go more to the forest for, for the industrial round wood, but also uh, focus on waste wood, uh, recycling wood in the future. 
yeah, what I mentioned before, Birch, very, very good uh, available or very good usable for us. All the soft hardwoods, no problem with that. I think Birch will very fast, uh, will grow very fast on this uh, beetle calamity areas, what you see in this area here right now. So we, we believe that Birch uh, will be very interesting to us. Um, uh, but it will be a long road for us to use really hard hardwoods uh, to a big extent with beech and oak. But for the sawmills, I think uh, the future here is not so bright. Um, the industry must become more flexible. They will use more species. They will have, they need to uh, adjust their processes. They need to invest in automation. And also uh, they need to invest in logistics. This is not easy, I would say. And higher efficiency is needed to make it workable with this future product. For sure, complexity will increase. Uh, overcoming uh, through digitization is possible. We are very poor in it, I have to say. When I look in Germany, digitization is not our strength. We are good in producing, but digitization, very poor. Yeah, we see it all the time when we discuss with the forestry sector. We want to exchange data. Uh, I hope that the future generations are more open for this because I think we all need it. And what we are doing, we are fully concentrating now, uh, uh, first of all, on having good solutions for our suppliers uh, and cooperate in partnership. But we see the transformation in forestry. Uh, and I think that's why we are massively investing in recycling, uh, recycling wood. Uh, and we, we do some kind of backward integration, what you see on the picture here. So uh, we have many recycling points now. They are actually plants uh, with usually uh, uh, three, four hectare where we collect the wood. We have uh, logistics for that. And then we, we chip it and then we bring it to our plants because we really want to increase recycling volume in the future because uh, I think we, for our products, we see here clearly the future. We call these uh, recycling points timber pack. So from timber packaging, so we take the timber packaging back. When we talk about solutions or challenges, um, I, I uh, told you that our sawmill is in the Sauerland area. You see here the the spruce, all that. Uh, but of course, in, in very short time, in the last three, four years, there was so much wood available that all the industry couldn't use it. So what we did as offer a solution for our forest owners, uh, we, we invested in uh, dry storages. For instance, we paid 80% to the owner, the wood price. So it was our risk uh, to, to pay for it. Uh, and uh, the, the rest, the forest owner gets when it goes to the sawmill. So with this intermediate storage, we found a good solution for a lot of forest owners that they earn some money that they can replant um, and uh, that they have also a future, what is of course also in our interest. To sum up, uh, five really important points in the end. We see that climate stable mixed forests are without alternative. This is clear. We all need this climate stable forest. We don't want to have uh, wind storms, we don't want to have pine uh, beetle calamities. This is also not good for an industry. But please also have in mind that it is important to maintain a certain share of coniferous wood uh, as a sufficient resource for wood products, uh, for construction and furniture in the future. I think this is really important. This is our message. Uh, not, we cannot live all from hardwood. Yeah? This doesn't work for the industry. Uh, in our purchasing areas worldwide, we see sufficient volumes of coniferous wood uh, available for the next one to two decades and later. But on the other hand, we see that we are forced to develop suitable production processes and adv advanced products out of a variety of different species like hardwood trees, maybe soft hardwood trees in the future. So we have to really invest there. Uh, and uh, make this more uh, usable. Sustainability is a new mega trend for wood-based panels. We see recycling wood as a major impact. Today we use it mainly in particle board, but we have also other boards uh, like OSB, MDF, where, where you can use it. Uh, so I think there's some more research and more uh, research and development done in the future. And uh, we see that supply chain gets more and more complex because we will have higher number of species. It's not only spruce here in Germany anymore. 
And when you see the piles in forest, I don't know if you had the chance to look at the pile in the forest in Germany, they are already very small, yeah? because you have these different forest owners and everyone wants to uh, measure his own pile. And we are very strict in this. Forest owners are usually, they want to have the right number, the right price for their product. Yeah? So I think the, the complexity will really increase, especially in Germany, and we need more flexibil flexibility. And we only can overcome this when we uh, get in place more digitization. And I really hope that also uh, this starts now in forestry, that may, they are more open for these topics because it's a supply chain and they are very important uh, uh, suppliers to us and we cannot solve this problem ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Witte, for this insight on Agar and how you, your view as a representative of the industry is on the current forest situation and wood supply situation. We will now uh, start our Q&A, and for that I would like to ask uh, Mrs. Bolmus back up on the stage. <laughs> And this should work now. We have to be a little bit careful. Okay, and Ole will now quickly uh, explain how this will work for you. Okay, so thank you again, uh, Christian, for this uh, pleasant presentation and, um, and the insights. Um, for the industry perspective out of like the perspective from EGAM, but representative for the for the industry sector. And so um, we have now like um, a Q&A session. So if you're interested in like asking like some some questions, um, we, we, you'll be able, like I will pass you the microphone and just give me a small sign. And um, so maybe I can, I can start because I have like, um, um, yeah, an important question because yeah, yesterday we've been in Bonn and we sought the the policy insights um, because we are not just foresters, we are also like in the field of policy 